in the continuation of our history of democracy set of lessons what we're going to do is finish by talking about the significance of the suffragettes movement so the previous lesson talked of course about the suffragists uh, we noted that the suffragists were a movement that existed from between roughly 1890 to 1918 and they obviously um, they obviously opposed the, the current state of uh, electoral politics in the sense that they wanted to see the right for women to vote. Now, fundamentally, the distinction that existed between the suffragists and the suffragettes were, was mainly through that of their methods. The methods of the suffragettes was very different in the sense that for the suffragists at least, it was a case of non-violent, peaceful protest and activism that would eventually lead to uh, the culmination of a change in the law. The suffragettes were far more radical, not necessarily in terms of their belief system, although in some cases they were, but more so in terms of their methods, what they actually decided to do. They were a lot more militant and they were a lot more violent in terms of their attempts to try and uh, win the right of the vote for women. So the suffragettes movement is as a has a sort of active time period which is slightly shorter than that of the suffragists uh, this obviously makes sense given that militant uh, campaign groups tend to uh, tend to have quite a, a short spark in terms of how long they last in addition to which they begin to take shape a good 13 or so years after the the rise and the height of the suffragettes movement again it was a campaign aimed at the right for securing the right for women to vote but it was a militant campaign the movement was founded by uh, emmeline uh, pankhurst and her daughters um, uh, christabel and sylvia pankhurst this was in 1903 with the establishment of the women's social and political union the wspu now the suffragettes emerged from the frustration of the slow progress that was achieved by the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies, the suffragists movement. So, of course, the suffragists opting for non-violent and um, very slow reforms to the law using lobbying tactics and using campaigns and protests was a very slow method by which they could achieve the right for women to vote. And if you theoretically looked at it from the perspective of a suffragist, uh, they had been operating for at least 13 years and there had been foundations laid by previous um, suffrage movements um, prior to them um, and they still hadn't made any real significant progress in uh, securing the, the right for women to vote. And so as a result of which, the more aggressive tactics were seen to be able to draw more attention to their cause, hence why the suffragettes were um, seen to be quite popular during this, during this time period. So their methods includes a, a number of quite large, very public demonstrations and marches um, to try and make as much visibility as possible and to try and raise as much support and awareness for their cause. They would engage in acts of civil disobedience. They would often chain, chain themselves to railings. They would often interrupt political meetings. They would often hold unauthorized rallies. The more extreme tactics then started to appear as well. Things like breaking windows, things like setting fire to mailboxes, uh, even uh, attempting to, uh, to bomb buildings, uh, admittedly empty buildings, but bombing buildings nevertheless. The aim here was intended to essentially disrupt society and to force the government to have to take notice and to have to make a stand uh, against the suffragettes, um, either, um, either increasing their militancy or essentially giving in and, and allowing them to get what they want, which is, of course, universal suffrage. The results of these tactics, of course, meant that there was going to be quite a significant backlash from the government. The suffragettes were imprisoned. They often went on hunger strikes to protest their detention. In response to this, prison authorities often and quite um, and quite violently would force feed these women, um, which would then further lead to more public outcry and a further increased sympathy for their cause. 
In the relatively short time period that the suffragettes were actually very, very active, there were a number of key events which really solidified not only the the scale and the scope of their movement, but also highlighted the methods of their movement quite substantially. You have, for example, in 1910, the issuance of Black Friday. This was a major confrontation between the police on the one hand and the suffragettes on the other. It occurred on the, on the 18th of November 1910, and it essentially began as a peaceful protest just like some of the chartists protests it began as a peaceful protest which then turned violent many women were assaulted by the police again leading to a call for more public outrage and more public outcries for uh, for, for, for for sympathy for their cause fundamentally arguably the most famous event that takes place probably within all of the suffrage movement in general, not just the uh, suffragettes movement, was the death of Emily Davidson in 1913. She was a prominent suffragette and she had died because what she had done is uh, at the Epsom Derby ran in front of, stepped out in front of King George V's horse. Um, she would essentially become a quite significant symbol of martyrdom um, given the fact that their, her, her, her death was a significant symbol for the suffrage movement now if you want to see that video there's a video of this taking place it is on it is on youtube okay it's not particularly nice obviously because it's a, a, a video of someone getting run over by a horse essentially but you can understand and you can see not only because it was videoed as well that this obviously represented a major symbol for the uh, f for the movement itself. Now, in terms of its legacy, the, the suffragettes would suspend their militant campaign during the First World War. This was, of course, in order to support the war effort and also subsequently to support their own cause if they were continuing to cause riots and havoc uh, during a time of quite immense patriotism during the First World War. It would not work well in their favor fundamentally they they knew that that wouldn't work well in their favor Eveline and Christabel Pankhurst encourage women, in fact, to contribute to the war effort, again, just like the suffragists, believing that patriotism and believing that getting involved in, in, in the war effort and, and supporting their country would help their cause, essentially humanizing these individuals into a, a then, a then essentially giving rise to the demand for them to have equal rights as men. The militant tactics and willingness to endure hardship for their cause had a very strong lasting impact on political activism uh, and the fight not just for women's rights worldwide, but also for, uh, for, for black rights worldwide. You can see some of the tactics being utilized some of the sort of militant tactics being utilized by, 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 by various different groups, for example, in the United States during their civil rights movements in terms of both women's rights and in terms of, um, uh, of minority rights, the rights for African-Americans. And so as a result of which you could see that their, uh, their methods, even though they were very controversial, very divisive, often quite violent, were seen to be undeniably playing a very crucial role in keeping the issue of women's suffrage in the public eye. Now, the extent of debate about what really was the cause for government to eventually shift their tactics and actually give the rights of voting for women... Uh, what actually was the cause of that? Was it the peaceful suffragists? Was it the more radical suffragettes? Or was it social factors like, for example, the impact of the First World War? Arguably, there is no one necessary right answer. All three of these contributed in their own ways to achieving the political outcome and the political results that they achieved. So that's something that you should bear in mind when thinking about this topic critically.